Amid the majestic, snow-covered peaks of the Himalayas lies an unsettling truth. This imposing mountain range is the result of one of the most intense geological collisions on the planet. The region, famous for its natural beauty and for hosting the highest point on Earth, is also the stage for one of the most dangerous seismic threats ever recorded. The geological history of the Himalayas begins with the movement of tectonic plates, where the Indian plate slowly advances northward, colliding with the Eurasian plate at a speed of about 1.7 inches per year, 45 millimeters per year. This encounter is neither smooth nor constant, but marked by long periods of energy accumulation that, at some point, are violently released. At the center of this dynamic is the main Himalayan thrust, MHT, a low-angle megathrust fault that runs the entire length of the mountain range. It is here that the Indian plate is being pushed beneath the Eurasian plate. The structure of the MHT is segmented, and each segment can rupture independently, meaning that different parts of the range are susceptible to separate but equally devastating earthquakes. In some stretches, the accumulation of stress is greater, forming seismic gaps, areas that have not experienced large earthquakes for centuries and are therefore seen as candidates for future events. Historical records show that the Himalayas have already experienced massive quakes at intervals estimated between 100 and 300 years, although not uniformly. Among the most impactful was the earthquake of the year 1505 in the Mustang region, considered to have a magnitude greater than eight. In the 19th century, other major events struck the area such as the one in 1803 in Garhwal, and those in 1833 and 1934, which devastated the Kathmandu Valley and parts of northern India. In the 20th century, the earthquake of 1950 on the Assam-Tibet border reached magnitude 8.7, causing massive landslides and altering river courses. More recently, in 2015, the Gorkha earthquake in Nepal claimed nearly 9,000 lives and left millions homeless without even releasing all the accumulated stress. The current concern is with segments considered overdue for a major rupture. Studies indicate that areas of western Nepal, northern India, states such as Uttarakhand and Himachal Pradesh, and parts of Bhutan have already surpassed the estimated interval for a large magnitude event. The analysis of paleoseismic records marks of ancient earthquakes preserved in the geology, confirms that some of these regions are beyond the average expected time for a new rupture, increasing the probability of occurrence. Advances in technology have brought more precise tools to monitor this threat. GPS and satellite measurements reveal that parts of the MHT are highly locked, accumulating energy without releasing movement. Research published in 2020 indicates that a 600-mile about 960 kilometers section in the central Himalayas has the potential to generate an earthquake of magnitude 8.5 or higher. Smaller tremors are also recorded more frequently, and although they are not direct signs of a major imminent event, changes in their patterns can precede disasters. Population density in the region further amplifies the risk. The Indo-Gangetic Plain, south of the Himalayas, is one of the most populated areas on the planet, with cities such as Delhi, Kathmandu, Dehradun, Guwahati, and Shimla within high seismic risk zones. Many of these cities suffer from unplanned urban growth, aging buildings, and little earthquake resistance. If an event of magnitude greater than eight occurs during the day, with schools, offices, and roads full, human losses and economic damage would be immense. The structural vulnerability of cities in the impact zone is one of the most critical points in preparing for a possible megaquake. In Kathmandu, for example, Thousands of buildings that withstood the 2015 earthquake were later deemed unsafe. In Delhi, urban growth has advanced into areas near known geological faults, and much of the construction does not follow earthquake-resistant engineering standards. This scenario means that when the next major earthquake occurs, the number of collapsed buildings could be massive, increasing the risk to millions of people. Beyond the immediate danger of shaking, there are secondary threats that can be as destructive as the earthquake itself. Landslides in mountainous areas, common after quakes, can block rivers and create unstable artificial lakes. If these lakes break, they can release enormous volumes of water and debris, causing catastrophic floods in villages and cities at the mountain's base. Another risk is the rupture of glacial lakes. The economic impact of a major Himalayan earthquake would not be limited to physical destruction. The interruption of highways, railways, and airports would hinder rescue operations and the distribution of supplies. Power grids, water supply systems, and communications could completely collapse. 
Tourism, vital to local economies such as Nepal's and northern India's, would suffer an abrupt decline, and reconstruction could take decades, consuming a significant portion of the GDP of affected countries. Cultural losses would also be incalculable. Centuries-old temples, monasteries, and historic monuments located in risk zones could be destroyed. Many of these sites are not only architectural heritage, but also represent the cultural and spiritual identity of local communities. The loss of such structures would deeply affect the social fabric and heritage of the region. From an environmental perspective, the force of a mega-earthquake could alter river courses, change entire landscapes, and even influence local climate in the short term. Dams and other hydroelectric infrastructure near geological faults would be at risk of rupture, potentially generating waves of destruction that could cross national borders. The chain effect of these consequences makes preventive planning even more urgent. However, preparing for a disaster of this magnitude requires not only local action, but also regional coordination. Since the seismic fault crosses several countries, any significant quake could simultaneously affect Nepal, India, Bhutan, Pakistan, and even parts of Tibet in China. This demands that preventive and response measures be designed jointly, going beyond political borders. The geopolitical complexity of the Himalayan region makes cooperation between countries a constant challenge. Although geology ignores borders, human responses to disasters are strongly linked to national interests, diplomatic relations, and, at times, historical rivalries. A major earthquake could affect Nepal, India, Bhutan, Pakistan, China, and even Bangladesh simultaneously, causing human and material losses in multiple territories within minutes. There are regional initiatives that aim to strengthen resilience against natural disasters, such as the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation and the International Center for Integrated Mountain Development. However, these actions often face obstacles like lack of resources, political will, and large-scale implementation mechanisms. The absence of a fully integrated seismic alert system among countries makes the initial response slower, which can cost precious lives. An effective solution would require the creation of a transnational seismic monitoring network, where scientific data is shared in real time among nations. Along with this, joint rescue exercises and evacuation drills would help prepare teams and populations to react quickly to a large magnitude quake. This would also include unified protocols for receiving international aid and distributing resources in critical areas. The use of technology is another key point in damage mitigation. State-of-the-art sensors, satellite mapping, and synthetic aperture radar systems can help identify higher risk areas and monitor millimetric shifts in the Earth's crust. Early warning apps integrated into mobile networks could alert millions of people seconds before seismic waves arrive, which is already proven effective in other countries. However, technology and monitoring will only have a real impact if combined with solid public policies. This means revising building codes, reinforcing existing structures, creating temporary shelters, and investing in community education on earthquake safety. Training volunteers and creating clear evacuation plans are also essential to reduce chaos in the first moments after a quake. Preparation is not just a matter of science or engineering, but also of culture and collective awareness. Well-informed communities tend to respond better and faster to emergencies. Awareness campaigns that teach from an early age how to act during and after a quake can save countless lives when the inevitable happens. The central question about the great Himalayan earthquake is not if it will happen, but when. All scientific evidence, from geological records to GPS measurements, points to an inevitable scenario. The time interval between major events has already been exceeded in several areas, and the accumulation of energy along the faults indicates that the region is increasingly close to a new large magnitude rupture. What will determine the scale of the tragedy is not the earthquake itself, but the level of preparedness of communities and governments. History has shown that countries with strict earthquake safety policies suffer far fewer losses when facing natural disasters. In the case of the Himalayas, the combination of high population density, vulnerable infrastructure, and limitations in cross-border cooperation increases the potential for destruction. Reducing these risks requires immediate action. Investments in structural reinforcement, emergency team training, and the creation of early warning systems should be a priority. Short-term actions, such as building inspections and evacuation drills, can save thousands of lives. In the long term, integrating data and strategies among the region's countries can create an effective barrier against social and economic collapse. Community involvement is equally crucial. 
Capacity building programs, emergency drills, and educational campaigns can transform how people react when the ground starts shaking. The more prepared citizens are, the lower the chances of panic and disorganization, factors that often increase the number of victims. Nature will follow its course, regardless of human action. What is at stake is the choice between being ready or being caught off guard. Preparation does not eliminate the risk, but drastically reduces the impact, preserving lives and heritage that took generations to build. If you believe it is important for more people to understand the severity of this threat, share this video. Subscribe to the channel for more content on science, history, and disaster prevention. Turn on notifications so you don't miss any alerts, and leave a comment with your thoughts on what the region's countries should do to prepare for the inevitable.